Hello, I'm John Ombler, the Acting Chief Executive of the Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Authority. Today I'm joined by four of my colleagues because, as you'll know, Sarah is coming to an end and transition to other agencies is happening. I'm joined by Peter Mersey, the Chief Executive of Land Information New Zealand, Chai Chua, the uh, Chief Executive of the Ministry of Health, David Small, the Chief Executive of the Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment, and Andrew Kibblewhite, who's the Chief Executive of the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet. Now, Peter, Chief Executive of LINS, you have inherited a number of functions from SARA already. Um, people will be interested to know um, what are those functions, when did you get them, how's it going? Okay. So uh, LINS inherited essentially the red zone, residential red zone, uh, flatlands in mm -hmm. Canterbury uh, and the demolitions in the Port Hills. Right. So we took those functions over on the 1st of December. Mm -hmm. The transition actually went very smoothly, it's a great team there. Looking forward, of course, the, um, it's a fairly challenging environment, particularly the mm. demolitions. Uh, and part of what we'll want to do is work with the community on the flatlands to, to look at opportunities for interim land use until such time as final decisions are taken on, on what that land will ultimately be used for. Yes, because you'll be managing the land, but uh, the longer term um, uses of that uh, Regenerate Christchurch, another one of the new institutions we'll be looking at. Yes, yeah, so we'll have some involvement in that, but it'll be very mm. much just advising mm. on the existing state and making mm. sure that any interim land use is done in mm. a way which preserves those options for what the community might mm. want to do in the long term. Yeah, and um, I sense that one of the things that made the transition go quite smoothly was that you inherited a whole team and just plugged them into your organisation? Yes, we did. In fact, uh, the, the team, particularly in the, in the demolitions area on the Port Hills, had a very good established set of relationships with the community and mm. we were very, very keen when we took those functions on that we retained that connection into the community. Mm. It's a, it's a high risk area, a high profile area, and mm. working with the community to us, was we saw that as incredibly mm. important. Thank you, Peter, and um, thanks for what you're doing, and um, all the best for the future. And I know that the people of Christchurch will be keen to make sure that, um, uh, or to be keen to see that Linz succeeds. And certainly our intention is to do this in a way that is, uh, maximises the opportunity mm. for Canterbury. Tremendous. Thanks, Thank you. And um, the next um, Chief Executive who inherited some functions is Chai Chua from the Ministry of Health. And Chai, um, in your case, some of the uh, functions that you've inherited um, are carried out by the Canterbury District Health Board on behalf of the Ministry. Can you tell people a little bit about exactly what it is that you've inherited and how it's going? Yeah, thank you John. So as you say, uh, Ministry of Health has inherited the cycle uh, social um, services in Canterbury um, to deliver that we actually have an excellent uh, District Health Board, Canterbury District Health Board, yeah. and they have been in the forefront working anyway with all the various stakeholders in terms of looking mm -hmm. at what services required and actually doing the wellness survey just mm -hmm. to make sure that they're monitoring the impact. So we're continuing with the same resources. So mm -hmm. the support the ministry is giving is to actually ensure that as the Canterbury District Health are working with the three local authorities, look through the various uh, psychosocial activities and monitoring the impact, what sort of system they might need in Wellington uh, with other departments. So that's mm -hmm. our role. Mm -hmm. And so we are making sure that we support uh, mm -hmm. the work that's done at the coalface and not getting in the way. Yeah, and uh, with the um, re recovery from a disaster like this, it's all very easy for us to look at um, the hard things, if you like, you know, the, the buildings mm. and the rebuilding, mm. but um, people and people's recovery um, is a huge challenge. Yeah, I think that that, that cannot be underestimated. I think mm. that, you know, um, you know, the literature tells us you, this will take many, many years and then mm. it will manifest itself in different ways. So the important thing is to actually have resources on the ground that's constantly engaging with the community and keeping a watchful eye mm. around what's developing around the various communities. So it will be, it will affect different communities and different age groups differently. So that's mm. why it's really important to actually mm. have uh, us watching what's happening in the city as well as what's happening in the suburbs as well. Yes, and you talked before about the wellbeing index. Um, we've been doing that for some time so we can track progress yeah. or lack of. Um, and you're saying that will continue and be used as a monitoring tool to know how we're going? Absolutely. I think we're quite keen that we've now got some uh, historical data on wellbeing survey index, uh, mm -hmm. so we intend to keep using that and actually keep mm -hmm. and asking ourselves, so what is that telling us and what more should we be doing? Very good. Thanks, Chai, and um, please pass on thanks to David Mates for his part in this as well. Will do. Very good, thanks. And the, the third of my colleagues to join me today is um, David Small from MB, and um, 
David, you've inherited a few bits and bobs too, which you can tell people about and tell us how it's going. Yeah, we're um, going to contribute in the residential rebuild and mm. in relation to the public sector procurements that are going on in Canterbury. We've been mm. working with CIRA on these issues and with local partners. Mm. We'll take the leadership role from CIRA but continue to partner with local leaders, local people. Residential tenancy service is one of the areas that we're taking on. Mm. We will be looking to help find resolution to outstanding insurance issues as quickly as we can and there are mm. some complicated issues still outstanding and we'll provide a range of advice around um, residential repair and rebuild. Mm. And um, you're located nationwide. Um, w what is your presence in Canterbury? And if people want to talk with your people about this, how, how do they do that? Well, we've got a lead person down there, Larry Bellamy, who's working mm. with partners down there. We've inherited mm. a team from Cyril, which we're delighted about, so we've been able mm. to hit the floor running. Uh, we've had some envy people down there already, so we're looking just to make sure we're organised as effectively as we can be, both to do our own work and to build mm. the wider relationships that we'll need to be effective more broadly. Tremendous. Thank you, David. Thank really you, good. John. Good. And the, the fourth of my colleagues to join me today is Andrew Kibblewhite from the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet. And um, Andrew, I, I re recollect that um, late last year the Advisory Board on Transition, um, chaired by Dame Jenny Shipley, um, called all of us together, um, together with a lot of other um, stakeholders in, in Christchurch, you know, people who, who would have a view about what successful transition would look like, and um, met with us all, and quite critical to that was the way that central government um, still needed to be all joined up, and that's where DPMC comes in. Yes, it does, John. It was a really good session with uh, that advisory board and with the stakeholders that uh, were assembled. And part of what it really emphasised was just how government collectively has to do its bit to support Canterbury and Greater Christchurch area move forward. So part of that obviously is the work that Sarah has done over the last five and a bit years. I think mm. that's uh, um, uh, a huge uh, contribution that you've made in the mm. organisation as a whole. Uh, and I'd just really like to acknowledge uh, that here. I think the stakeholders that gathered that day were keen to engage with me, with my colleagues and with other central government um, uh, leadership and from uh, departments that are, that are working in the, in the Christchurch space. So we're well set for the future and the government's been clear what it's looking for uh, here. It wants to, to leave Christchurch in as good a shape as it can. It wants it to be vibrant, it wants to be an attractive mm -hmm. place to live, it wants it to be uh, a really um, sort of uh, forward-looking and uh, outgoing uh, community. So all of our agencies are part of helping that happen. Mm. It's part of uh, stepping back so local leadership can step forward. And mm. that transition is a, is a big part of what we're interested in. Yeah, and um, I think uh, we've been at, pa at, at pains to point out that uh, even despite with Sarah going, um, Canterbury has not diminished in the government's priorities. It's still one of its top for priorities. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, the, uh, the regeneration of Greater Christchurch is still right there as the recovery from the Canterbury earthquakes has been um, mm. since they happened, uh, mm. really. That, that hasn't changed. Mm. Uh, so my department, uh, you know, we work uh, closely with uh, uh, the responsible minister and with other ministers and of course with the Prime mm. Minister and part of what we do uh, is, is really muster the collective efforts mm. of uh, the Wellington system to help mm. uh, help Christchurch step up as central government steps back to what you would regard mm. as a more typical normal role at some mm. point in the future mm. you know, where we're, we're not engaging quite in the very active way that we have since the earthquake. Yeah, of course one of the things Sarah's been doing is, is monitoring, I talked to Chai about it a minute ago in one of the areas, but Sarah's been monitoring across the entire spectrum of the, of the recovery and reporting to ministers periodically and talking about what else might need to be done. Um, that's a critical role for you. Uh, it certainly is. So the functions um, DPMC has picked up itself, as well as that broader coordinating mm. function, uh, some of them are about monitoring um, and providing advice on the recovery. We'll do that very much uh, with the council uh, and certainly with Regenerate Christchurch, <coughs> uh, the, the, the lead agency mm. uh, of the new entities that have been created for shaping the, the, the future of Christchurch. We also have roles uh, in the infrastructure space, so carrying on the work of funding and providing oversight to the rebuild of the uh, infrastructure. There's um, a, a, a planning function there which will increasingly shift to uh, providing support to um, uh, the 
uh, Regenerate Christchurch and others as the mm. regeneration plans are, are created, we'll put a, a second opinion in mm. on that. And we're taking stock of what the lessons mm. uh, from the earthquake experience has been. There's been a huge amount of work done uh, mm. over the last uh, five and a bit years, and it's just beholden on us to make the most of the mm. insights from that so that we're better placed uh, for uh, similar events in the future. Very good. Thank you for that. And um, as well as the the four organisations represented here today who have been talking to, um, there are two others as well, uh, Regenerate Christchurch, which we've talked about a little bit, and Otakaro Limited, both being established to take over functions that were formerly undertaken by by SERA and to address this this new part of, of the journey, which is moving from recovery to regeneration. And you can read about a lot of these transitions and the roles of the organisations of my colleagues here, um, as well as the others I've just spoken about, in the latest Future Christchurch update, which will be in your letterbox soon.